continue with our next speaker. So our next speaker uh, will be looking at actions taken by rural communities against the bill. Uh, so I'd like to invite Constance Mohale, who's um, the National Coordinator for the Alliance for Rural Democracy. Uh, thank you, Lucy, and thank you um, to the Nelson Mandela Foundation for adding life to this campaign, Stop the Bantu Stand Bills. And thank you to the audience. I saw familiar faces. Um, and um, I'm very courageous and, and confident to speak here because I know I'm speaking to people who are sympathetic to our cause. Uh, my task is very simple to speak about um, the resistance, um, how rural people have organized themselves to resist. And uh, it, it was long before 94, uh, like uh, uh, Sister Nolundi have already alluded to the history from the Black uh, Authorities Act to date. And I will just speak on um, the resistance in the times of my life where I, I could witness. And uh, starting far back from the, um, the Communal Land Rights Act and uh, how uh, the people of um, uh, the Kaufontein <coughs> community, the communities in Limpopo, Makuleke community, uh, uh, testified and uh, made it possible for Clara to be taken out of um, their own. And um, during that time, we, I mean, we are, all of us, we want tenure security in the rural areas. So we want a legislation that would give people tenure rights in the rural areas so that they are not pushed around. But the way these legislations are crafted, they are not, um, they are crafted in a way that will strip away land rights of the people. And it is the people who first organize themselves and come to whoever NGOs and make sure that the litigation partners come and um, there is a case. So um, it was a victory for us to see Lara scrapped out of the role and um, confirming that any legislation that is going to be uh, giving Kenya rights to communal land must recognize the nested nature of family rights, village rights, and group rights. It must come from below. It must uh, regulate what is already a practice in a certain village. The Constitutional Court emphasized on the legislation that is going to unite South Africa and not entrench apartheid boundaries and entrench the patriarchal nature of the bad practices of customary law. So, and that is how the Clara was struck out of the role. And we were hoping that any legislation that was going to follow is going to take, make sure that it meets those constitutional obligations. But to our surprise, we see the traditional cause bill. Uh, this traditional cause bill, in fact, it is the reason why the Alliance for Rural Democracy exists today. <coughs> because we found ourselves in a room from different provinces, different languages, <coughs> saying the same things. <coughs> and because what <coughs> the people of Bakata in the Northwest are experiencing, it is the same thing that the people of Polonia are experiencing. It is the same thing that the people of Matila are experiencing. And we, we see this as a structural problem, which this structural solution, which these people to resist. And I really want to applaud these communities that has made sure that they stood up and made sure that um, these laws are brought into force and the public can know about them. So I you know that even though there's litigation cases in each and every cases, this thing still comes back into the radar of parliament. We don't know how. So we remember the Gala communities who, who, who emphasize that a leader must be from the people. So like Sis Longo, so we always say, in Kosi I knew I, I, I actually like it doesn't come like a Holy Spirit from above. You understand? It must come from below. 
But it seems like all these voices, we are speaking to a toy phone because nobody is listening. We don't know why. So, all these bills that uh, Sis Mabundu was talking about gives power to a political leader or political office to dictate to us who is the leader and uh, to even decide when they want to withdraw them. So we will hear more when Sis Mabundu is coming, I mean, to see that it is not that people don't want to respect the institution of traditional leaders, but they are saying, listen to how, how customary practice and regulate what is custom. And also recognize the history of distortion of custom, because custom has been distorted, the real traditional leaders have been uh, replaced by traditional leaders who will um, abide by the rule of law, which is uh, the rule of law by politicians or parliament, not by the customary law, which is from the people. So the history of resistance goes from like Matiwa Neskop, so color reserve is like Matiwa Neskop, those people said, we bought the land. We don't want, a we know who is the traditional leader. We don't want a traditional leader <coughs> imposed on us. And they have made sure that they take steps to resist. So. We see what is happening in Kolobeni currently, but it's not only in Kolobeni. I think voices from this room, from the communities, they will say what is happening. So we need a law that will not undermine the indigenous accountability structures and the participatory decision-making nature of customary law. So if you say you're going to regulate the traditional courts bill and you're going to turn our traditional leaders into judiciary people who are going to judge us uh, using customary law, which we know there are bad practices of customary law, which doesn't recognize the role of women and uh, young women. So how, uh, why, why, do you, why can't you say, where is the traditional courts, bill, uh, uh, courts still happening? how and look at the best practices and replicate them and then turn it into law. Yes, access to justice has to be near to the people. We know how our judicial courts are not um, a conducive, providing a conducive environment for people. But in the way that we're going to turn traditional leaders into customary courts, which are going now, I, I used to sit in the uh, reference group, which was redrafting the now the current um, uh, bill, which is all our uh, our suggestions are allowed not, not there in that bill. So we tried to resist. We wrote letters to the deputy uh, uh, John Jeffrey saying, "Why do you spend time?" with us in a reference group for six months. Then the final product doesn't show what a civil society we are proposing. We wrote letters to the president. We even wrote, you know, uh, we, we even went to Pretoria, even to Cape Town. We marched to Cape Town. We, wrote, we submitted a memorandum. Just an acknowledgement from Cape Town, nothing. From the union building, which was on the 5 June, we just get an acknowledgement. We wonder, you know, we, because this is a, there has been a resistance, a non-violent resistance, where as rural people, we are saying, you know, listen to us, who is our advocate? But no answer, no acknowledgement. So this is, it's not like people are folding arms and not doing anything about it. So the outvoting of the traditional cause bill in 2012 by five provincial mandates was as a result of the lobby of the activists of our research partners, the Alliance for Rural Democracy, trying to show, because also one thing that is challenging for us is lack of resources, because we need to educate all these institutions which are making decisions, because we don't think they are educated enough or they are informed enough about the contents of these bills. We went to the public hearings and you could see that the, 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 the committee hears about these arguments for the first time. Mm. So also 
the, the litigation cases I mentioned, Lara, but the Lamosa case was also outlined how partic public participation should be. It stated clearly that public hearings, there must be adequate notice, the venue must be told on time, the means of travel for people to go to the hearings is, must be there. The agenda, what is going to be speaking about, what we're going to speak about, it must be there. But still, our parliament will announce last minute um, announcement there's a hearing. We have to struggle about the venue and the venue will change overnight. And when you get to there, the people who are in the hall don't even know what the subject is. So even though there's a constitutional judgment on what public participation should be. So these are the history of the struggle and I'll stop there uh, to allow uh, and not to tap into other speakers who will come before me. Thank you very much. Amanda! Yes, um, so we'll continue with our next speakers and, um, and part of what I'm really kind of encouraged by is also just hearing how there is cross-pollination in terms of people's work as well. Um, so our next speaker is Nonke Mbutama, and she's from Amadiba Crisis Community in Bodobeni. Um, so she'll be talking around the resisting mining and the right to say no court victory. Right? So I think as we look at what challenges we're facing, I think it's important to see as well where have we had gains. So I'd like to welcome you. How are you? I am fine. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know what's wrong with my surname. It's always uh, pronounced wrong. I'm Gutuma. <laughs> I think I was thinking it's the easiest uh, in African surnames, but I just noticed it's the most difficult one. Um, yeah. Uh, in Kolobeni, we are facing with the proposed mining for quite a long time, uh, more than 20 years, where the mining, I mean, the mining company from Australia uh, discovered the minerals in our own land where we live for centuries. And uh, when they discovered this titanium, we said, um, no. We don't need minerals. We're not eating minerals. We eat food. We eat um, madumbis. We eat sweet potatoes. We eat millets. We don't need um, these minerals of them. Uh, in order to do that, it was not an easy task because the government of South Africa, they just understand that um, minerals are boosting the economy of the South Africa. But uh, whereas South African children are sleeping with hunger on those minerals, that is why we said that in Kolobeni, well, there's not even one child is sleeping with hunger because we have utilized <coughs> land to feed ourselves, not to feed um, the Australians. <laughs> um, yeah, and we said no. But it was not a, an easy task because they said, um, no, we can't say no to a mining because it boosts the economy of uh, South Africa. And we said, no, uh, we have a right to decide what is good for us. And uh, it doesn't matter what we're saying. Uh, the government was keep uh, supporting the mining company to come and push us away from the land. And uh, we decided to take our own state to court which is the most painful part, because we are living in a democratic country where we're just hoping that right now, uh, it, it, that time it passed, where you take your own state to court. It was an apartheid regime where the apartheid government was no listening to the people. But even on this current government, we're still doing the same thing. That means the history <laughs> repeats itself. Uh, where we said that um, we have a right to say no. Yes. And then we, the courts of South Africa, it takes time to understand if this, it can be held in South Africa. 
because it was the first case where they, they just see there is no mining, but people, they claim their own rights. But eventually they allow. And then it's been discussed. And the judgment was being handed down uh, last year in November, where the judge, uh, it says that um, the people of Kolobe never fully informed consent because they are the right landholders, not anybody else. But guess what was happening? Because we're so happy when we see that this is the South Africa that we fought for. And this exactly what democracy is. Because when we're going to give a consent, uh, we're going to decide what is good for us. Yeah. But the state says, we're going to appeal the decision. Mm -hmm. uh, these people cannot decide what is good for them. Uh, we are the government, we're going to decide what is good for them. Because if the judge, it says that uh, the community must give a consent, it's going to cause a chaos. That means it's the company and the government can decide. That is why when we see this uh, bill, this TKLB, it just goes straight to this appeal of um, the government right now in Kolobeni, where, because if you look at the mining applicant, our chief in Kolobeni, he's a mining applicant, and he's already signing, uh, given a go-ahead with the mining company that must go and mine without a consent of the people, because he's a decider. And look at the TKLB. It promotes that, that uh, as it will be one person that is going to decide. But for myself, uh, I was young before 1994, but I know that uh, it was exactly uh, the government of uh, the apartheid government was doing uh, to decide together with the chief when it comes to development. And the same democratic government is, to, is still doing the same thing to promote this TKLB that um, when there is development, it will be a chief uh, that is going to be consulted. And it's not talking about consent, it's talking about consult consultation, which is wrong because consultation is just ticking the box. It's, some, it's something that you just tell the person that I'm here to do this. Yeah. I'm not asking you because yeah. you're not going to say anything. That is why we said that this consultation is not enough. We need to give a consent where we're going to sleep and think and dream if this is good for us or is good for you. That is why we said that if um, the government is going to promote or pass this TKLB, this country is so undemocratic. And this bill is very <coughs> unconstitutional. You cannot give a power one person over everybody. They just sell us alive and will be moved and will be uh, uh, pushed all the time. This bill is not speaking to us. It's either speaking to Russia, not to us, because it's opening, it's paving a way for these cooperatives to take our land away from us. That is why they're pushing this bill. And they are using this bill where they said that they're going to recognize the, the, the coison. The coison, they don't need a bill to be recognized. Yeah. But it's just a divide and rule. Because when you look between us as uh, Africans, I mean uh, uh, indigenous people, now we are fighting against each other together with the coison. Because the coison, they just look at, at us that we don't want them to be recognized, which is not true. There is a way where they, where they can just recognize. And when you, you, you look at this, this bill, as I'm saying, it's just a way of taking the land away from us. And Russia and China, they are waiting 
for the president to sign this bill yeah. in order to build these shopping malls, these mines and everything. It's just a way of a capitalism. That is why we said that South Africa is more, more, more seven step backwards yeah. instead of going forward. Why we are sitting down and waiting for our country is going to Russia or China. And they are using our traditional leaders. And we are not against the traditional leaders. Yeah. We are for <coughs> traditional leaders. But we want the traditional leaders that are going to be nominated by us yeah. and not by the state. And I can make an example. In Pondolet, we have two kings. The king of the state and the king of the community. Because of what they are practicing this TKLP before it's being passed. When there is a meeting of um, a, a, a state or the minister, they just brought their own king. And he's not even ashamed to say that you have no choice, I'm your king. That is why we said that um, if Ramaphosa is going to pass this bill, they are not preaching what they preach. And we said that we're not going to fold the arms and wait for them because they push us back. Before 1950s, the chiefs were used as a tool of taking our land. Yeah. And what did we do? Yes. If they want to push us to back on those times, and we are ready. And we're not going to fold the arms. Yeah because of they are using our own traditional leaders. And we said to the traditional leaders, even themselves, they must stood up to say that if they want to be safe, they must listen their own people. Because you can even see on this um, a, 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 a case of Kolobeni, the minister of DMR says that uh, he's going to do a survey but what are the people saying? Why uh, the government is no longer listening to the people? We need the government that is listening to the people. The development is for who? By who? If the development is for us, we need to decide what is good for us. But this development is always top-down approach. It's not coming from the bottom up. That is why uh, the Minister Gabriel Mandasha is saying that he's going to do a survey where he's going to go house to house to say that you want the mining or don't want the mining. Why is it like that? Where is the customer law? What the customer law says? We are living in a customer law. We are living in a traditional system where we decide in a collective way. We don't vote for land. But they are using the land as, as an asset where they're going to sell to anytime when they, they like. That is why we said that we're not going to allow this. And we'll fight if it should be. We're not going to allow. This land that we are sitting right now, we have a history where our forefathers were being executed in Pretoria. And they were fighting for this land. And they were given two things. The sake of money and the sake of land. Of sand. And they choose the sack of sand because they know that the sand will sustain their own children and their grandchildren. They did not choose money. Why money is always overpower a, 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 the decision of the community? Because now um, it's about making profit over the communities. That is why we said that we're not going to allow this situation in this country. But we need to stood up, all of us, not only one person. Because what they are doing right now, they are talking about mining, mining, mining. And as they said that mining, I mean minerals, are diminishing from the land. Now they want to start from the ocean, uh, where they use a nice word uh, that is an ocean economy. And you can be fooled if you are living in the rural areas. 
because we use um, to go to beach anytime when we like. We're just thinking that, oh, ocean, ocean economy, we're going to access the mussels and um, the crayfish as much as we like. That's not about us. It's about China. <coughs> we need to wake up before it's too late. Minerals are diminishing from the earth. And I was even reading the news where they said that the Johannesburg city, the chances of um, Johannesburg city alone to be sustained are very limited. And it's because underground is nothing. Why are we thinking for our own selves, not for the next generation? And there is no tomorrow, it's today. We need to wake up. That is why we said at Kolobeni, no mining, and we're not going to allow mining. And yeah. we're not saying that we want benefit from the mining. Yeah. We don't want mining. Mining is not only alternative. Yeah. Mm. And we said that the, we, we are not anti-development. We are for development. And we need a government that is going to listen to the people, not to decide on on top of the people. Yeah. That is us. And we're not going to change our mind. Even if they killed some of us to fight on this, we're not going to turn back. And we'll keep fight. We are many. Some people, they always say that these people are powerful. They are not powerful. But they have money. And we are many than them. That is why I said we need to stand up and to be united and to fight the capitalism. Capitalism is so strong. And the capitalists are very few than us. Mm -hmm. But we are not united. If we are keep not united to, to say that um, we have a right to say no, the capitalist, the capitalism <coughs> is going to defeat us. That is why we said that we're not going to allow the state. And if this TKLB is going to be passed, we need to be united against and to say no to TKB. Because this TKB is just uh, individualistic. It's no longer a communalism. Uh, the state that we have is moving away from a communalism. Communalism is where you are doing things in a collective way. But they don't believe in that. It's on our own hands to fight that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So the idea that these people are powerful, look, like when you say that, actually I hear people in Golobe are pretty powerful. Yeah. Uh, I think you inspire us and hopefully uh, it gives us courage to what else we need to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to continue to... <laughs> yeah, good morning, everybody. My name is Solomon Mabuza. I'm from Kumalana. Uh, at, uh, at the Ngoma's local municipality. In, <coughs> in Pumalanga, people of Pumalanga left behind in the democracy that, they, uh, that we have voted in 1994. We are still under the control of apartheid. In Pumalanga, no implementation of South African uh, land restitution you will know that 87% of land was taken by the whites uh, under uh, the legis legislation called um, uh, Native Land Act of 1913. So people, they've got a right to, to claim their land back, but no, implementa no implementation of that uh, 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 legislation. Land is still on the hands of white minority uh, uh, commercial farmers. Um, in Pumalanga, uh, people still under the, the oppressing of uh, uh, tribalism. Land is controlled by the tribal authorities and the government knows that, but it's not intervening. Uh, instead of people using the land that they have been claimed 
land is used by the tribal authority and the senior government officials. <coughs> I can make an example with uh, the big claim in Pumalanga called Ten Bush uh, Land Claim Land Division Number 162JU was passed in 2007, but it's still on the minority commercial farmers and the Lukezane uh, tribal authority. We need the implementation of that restitution, Act number 22 of 1994. We also need the implementation of uh, the Land Tenure Reform, Act number 112 of 1991. We people of, uh, we rural people, uh, we were oppressed under uh, the Bantu stand, uh, it's Act number 68 of 1951. I think there, there has been a misunderstanding uh, to the traditional leaders on that time. When the, the, the apartheid government said they will be the custodian of the 13%, no one has translated what is a uh, 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 what is to be a custodian? They said uh, the, that, that name of custodian, it says they are the owner of the 13%. If you are the custodian, you are not the owner. Uh, but it, up until today, they know that they own the, that 13%. We need the government to do a way, a way uh, the system of PTOs and RTOs. Uh, now we are in a democratic government. Uh, the section 25 subsection 6 allows us to, to have a, a land ownership in this country. But we are still under uh, the Act number 68 of 1951. We are still carrying PTOs and, R and RTO. Uh, I can make an example, e.g., as I said, with a 10 bush land claim. Uh, that, land, that claim is too big <coughs> in Bumalang. Uh, that land now is owned by the white minority farmers, uh, commercial farmers, and the Lukedlane, tribal authority. There is a, 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 a tribal authority called Lukedlane. It's in Goma's local municipality. They don't know nothing about uh, the law. They don't want to follow any law of government. Something that they know, they say, we are owning land. And these uh, uh, farms and minerals in that land, they, they just sell it to everyone who's coming, especially foreigners. Um, in the, there is another tribal authority called Matsamo, a uh, tribal authority. <coughs> The Matsamo Tribal Authority forced the people to be under the control of Swaziland. The chief of that tribal authority is coming from Swaziland, is Mr. Mtuduzi, uh, Emmanuel Shong. People of Swaziland now they are getting pension and all services in South Africa because they've got their representative, Mr. Mtuduzi Shong. Uh, the government knows about it. We met a match on the 10th of February 2017. We submitted our uh, our memorandum to the Premier, but no response. We met another uh, 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 March on the 12th of uh, uh, July this month. We submitted uh, 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 our memorandum, but nothing is happening. So we are requesting uh, the government and other organization that can assist on that uh, problem that we are facing. Uh, just to shake the government and to remind the government that South Africa is for the people of all who are living on it. But now, uh, in our area, uh, South Africa is for the parliamentary members, senior politicians, and the chiefs. Is undemocratic and is unconstitutional. So, I think there is another farm called Kalbrech. It's next to Malelane uh, in Komas. It's owned by the Matsamo Tribal Authority. That chief who's coming from Swaziland. <coughs> that chief now, as I'm speaking, is not in the office. 
but his accounting office now is going to end. It's ending two years. It's not in the office, but it's getting salary every month oh. and all services. It's getting free transport, everything. He's staying in Swaziland. He's getting money in South Africa. He's bringing people, pensioners in South Africa, to get a pension and the, the children to get free education. Government knows about it, but it's not intervening. I thank you. Thank you.